Hey, how's it going? I know you might look down at the video length and be hesitant to continue, but let me explain the video just a little bit first. This video is similar to the Mr. Mom video where I did a live setting to test the waters for future streams, and this is the same format but with some editing. I did the previous video on times 3 speed, but I did do this one on times 2 speed like I normally do so I can get a more accurate final end game time. The overall run was about 2.5 hours, and I did cut out about 70 minutes to keep this streamlined as much as I could. Today's video will be Vulpix and you might be wondering why I picked this Pokemon outside of it just being a request. It is the Pokemon that I almost picked from my very first fire type run, but I just kind of wrote it off as being bad. In fact, in my mind, I thought it was the worst pre-evolved fire type between it, Charmander, Growlithe, and Ponyta. My initial thoughts after coming back and looking over the moves and the stats with a more open mind is I thought that I could get this run somewhere between Charmander and Growlithe, and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised during my practice runs, so I wanted to do some more and refine the run and give you guys another live setting for this one. I want to keep this short, but before we begin, I'd like to say that I do solo run content often, and if that is of interest to you, consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date. If you are a returning viewer or someone new, don't worry, my videos aren't normally this long, and any sort of feedback or opinions are very welcome for this style of video since it's more experimental. And if you're someone who normally never interacts, comments, or generally just never really thinks about that sort of thing, do me a favor, scroll down and type in Firefox so maybe we can get this video into the algorithm and have it recommended to other people that enjoy this type of content. But with that said, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and enjoy the live format with some live reactions. So like I said in the intro, this is going to be a live another format, kind of like Mr. Mom, but we're going to try editing it. Uh, for this, very exciting news guys um, I was telling somebody in a comment I was I was like if I had the time and I could put off some videos I would look into learning how to modify red to give me a few little changes that would just be some quality of life changes for me and some funny things for the channel and someone reached out to me DZM plant Sci guy on Twitter huge shout out to you he sent me a couple of ROMs and they had the changes so before we jump into this um, let's go into a new game and we'll show you so the first change it's kind of minor but it does save me a little bit of time my name GLM is here and that's just fantastic and also we got cut care um, sorry if you're underage if you don't know what cuck means don't worry about it it's just fun don't ask your mom and let's just kind of dive into this so like I said this is gonna be live uh, commentary but I'm gonna be editing cutting some stuff out and we're going to see if we can get this into like a suitable video length. And we're running Vulpix. And the reason why I chose Vulpix is because um, it shocked me. I did a practice run with it last week. Um, and it was, it was okay. I thought it was okay. And then as I started progressing through the game, I was like, hey, we might be onto something here. Maybe this is what I should be doing. But anyway, wasting a little bit of time here. Uh, it's fine because I already got my perfect DV set up. I always reset for good DVs. Nowadays, ever since this fill video, I just use an editor to give it perfect DV so every Pokemon has the best chance. Uh, we use the Pokemon randomizer to get this start. If you didn't know, I figured I'd say that because I never really do. Uh, so we're going to get this Vulpix. And for today's, I thought about the name for a while. It's kind of hard to get a name for this one. But... I figured out a really good name that I really like. It's really fitting. It's a Firefox, guys. Get it? Mozilla Firefox, the web browser that probably no one uses anymore. So there we go. We replaced uh, Charmander, obviously, fire to fire. Very easy one-to-one -one ratio on this one. And we'll just hop into this rival battle. And you know it's not going to go well. We start off with Ember, which isn't too bad. Ember and Tail Whip. Tail Whip does absolutely nothing for you here. So in this first fight, you just have to spam uh, Ember. Uh, if you get a burn, that's even better. You can lose this one. Hopefully we don't here. But the thing about Vulpix is that, dare I say it has Psyduckian stats. It doesn't have very good stats. And it does have above normal special and above normal speed. Those are the two things that you can kind of work with. I have my notes here. I have some things that uh, 
I need to change from my previous runs to hope that maybe we can get a little bit of better time. And we're just going through this first little section here. We're not going to be battling much. Um, and we can't actually take on Brock early, even though runs like Charmander can, because you have a special uh, attacking move, and they have pretty weak special. We can't do that because Vulpix can't outspeed the Onyx. Uh, if you have perfect DVs and you set up your stat experience right, uh, you should be able to outspeed the Onyx about level 13, and that's kind of the goal here. I will be skipping the optional rival fight, but I will be coming back to him later. I haven't really found a good enough strategy to just simply eliminate him from the equation yet. It's just the experience is too good. So what we're going to do is we're going to just, I didn't save it, I probably should have. Uh, we're going to battle all the bug catchers and then backtrack to rival number 1A, I guess you would say. And this isn't too bad. This is exactly the kind of situation you want to be in. Ember's not a great move, but we'll talk about it more later because it's just going to be very useful for this very early game. And having, you know, I, I don't have Vulpix's special pulled up right now. I probably should have done some more preparation. I think it's 60 something 65 actually you know what we can look yeah we got a nice little uh baseline 65 special and you can work with that it speed's also not terrible but you just need the levels here uh if you can't outspeed brock i guess you could technically get past him with some resets but i found that it's very difficult in my testing so you just want to just make it easy on yourself we're in the medium fast leveling group so it's just not too bad my phone went off god damn it so here's the final bug catcher uh, we're only level 8, so we got quite a bit to go. The grind, we'll get to the grind in just a second, but these battles aren't too bad. So from here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to not even go to Pewter just yet. And I'm going to go back. And at this point, we still have 13 uses of Ember. And we want to backtrack to rival number uh, 1A. And I'm experiencing some slowdown in my game. Maybe it's the new... We'll have to do more testing. This is my first time using this new uh, hacked ROM with some gym leader map changes. So maybe that's something to do with that. I don't know. we got to test this. There's some slowdown going on here and there. Uh, but anyway, we want to backtrack to Rival 1A. But we have 13 uses of Ember. And you're going to have to grind a little bit anyway. There's not really any way around it. So we're going to do that. And something that I found that I like to do on runs where you have to backtrack and, you know, you're not competing for a number one time. Uh, there's that free Pokeball that I just picked up. So if you're in the area, you just might as well pick it up. Now what I am going to do is normally I would go into saying what I just thought in my head. I was like, well, maybe I should... Uh, catch a Pidgey with that Pokeball and it would make my little section where I have to catch my flyer a little bit easier because normally that's kind of a hassle. Uh, it's much easier to catch a level 3 Pidgey than it is to catch, you know, a level 7 Spiro or something like that afterwards. Um, but I'm thinking maybe we can do the Light Years Junior Trainer grinding after this and I want to give it a shot. This is kind of just live. Like I said, I've only done like about one and a half runs of this testing. So we're still doing some testing. It's not a fully optimized run. I didn't expect it to be, and I probably should have healed here. So let's just take a look. We're down to 13 health. If we get bubbled, there, well, bubbled already. We're, this probably isn't looking great. No, it's not looking great. That's fine though. We'll just use this a little potion, and that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Sand attack. Two sand attacks, oh my god. We've hit at least, but I get the feeling that this is about to get annoying. We haven't missed yet. If we can get a burn, that's our first miss. Second miss. Third miss. Fourth miss. Fifth miss, oh god. Oh, that was sand attack, guys. Oh, sand attack, so cool. I forgot to heal on the third attempt. We were very low. We got the burn. If it just goes for tail whips and some tackles, we could probably just take this spot. And it looks like it... I don't want to speak too soon. Yeah, we got this one. Okay. So I forgot to heal that time and we got it on the third attempt. Pretty good. Level 10. Now I am very interested in... Uh, real quick, let's just see how much... We only got one ember left. So... We may as well heal. So at this point, we're walking to Pewter for the first time. Uh, level 10, 
and okay we're getting some encounters. I was wondering I was thinking we haven't got an encounter yet uh, grinding since it's a one hit anyway it takes roughly the same time to uh, kill one of these instead of just running away from it it takes roughly the same time since you can one shot them there's no reason not to get this little extra experience here since you can just one shot everything we got enough ember PP and we'd probably have to heal before Brock anyway so it's kind of a no harm, no foul type situation. I would like to see some more metapods here, but it looks like nothing wants to uh, fight right now. Look at this. Hello? Viridian Forest? Any insects wanna? Okay, there we go. Jesus, okay. I made a save outside of the gym or right when I got into the city just in case this doesn't work. I'm just gonna jump into this. This is a practice attempt. You never know if you can do this because the, the diglet hits kind of hard sometimes. And I just wanna see how bad it is. Oh, this is doable. He's burned though. So we're gonna do some tail whips and take some more damage. Burn isn't great because he's not doing any damage to us. One damage. Okay, that's enough for me to know that I can do the Light Years Junior Trainer. Now, this is my patented strategy. No one else does this, and it's only a matter of time. I feel like one day you guys are going to see Egg Move runs or something else like Light Years Junior Training grinding and other channels, the big channels, and, you know, they're going to be taking it from me. They're going to be taking it from the little guy. So if you guys watch those bigger channels and they start doing this kind of stuff, you say, hey, you got this from Gym Leader Matt. But we can do the Light Years Junior Trainer grinding. It's probably not going to be worth showing it, but you guys just got the gist. Essentially, you just uh, let the Diglett damage you as much as it can, and then let the Sancho take you out. It's much faster than grinding Metapods, and that's the whole point. And Diglett gives some speed, uh, so that's always good too. So we're going to go ahead and just do my buying here. So that way we are out of the money and I will drop a save here because I do think that we can get this done in a hopefully in a timely manner. I'm not making the greatest speed. I think I think I was a little bit ahead of my last one. So real quick, we're going to I think we can three shot this with Ember. If, getting, getting a burn's bad because it halves his attack and if the Diglett has less attack that means it's just going to be not good. So I think 7 H... Oh my god, okay. We almost we cut that one close. And we're going to wide out here. Did I wide... Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a... That's a time loss. This is a time loss, guys. We're doing it live, though, so what can you really do? I need to go heal Imputer. And that was all of, like, 40 seconds of in-game time wasted. I'm not too worried about little things like that. Uh, some people will comment every once in a while and they'll say, uh, you could have used this move here and saved uh, 20 seconds on this guy. And I'm not too worried about it. Like at the end of the day, I made a mistake. I'm talking and I'm making a mistake. We're going to we're gonna come back after we do some Diglett. Uh, Light years junior trainer grinding, okay? Okay, so we've grinded a little bit. We are level 12. We're not quite level 13 yet. But I do think that this is the time where I could actually just uh, finish it off. And we should hit level 13 after this. Sand attack, kind of annoying. Two sand attacks, very annoying. Am I just going to lose this one anyway? <laughs> Thank God, that's all I got to say. So we hit it level... Oh no. No, 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 no. I made a mistake. I think we'll have to test this out. I'm going to go ahead and potion here. I'm actually going to try this without being full health. That's probably a mistake. So this is our first Brock attempt. 26. I should look this up right now, but I'm not going to. Geodude, very simple. You hope it uses defense curls. Uh, it's using a little bit too more, too much tackles for my taste. Every turn it's using a tackle. But it wasn't too bad. 26 should be enough to outspeed the Onyx. And it's burned. So when you burn it, uh, normally great. But for this, uh, it'll force Brock to use one of his 1800 uh, full heals he's got. So it makes him waste a turn. And this was very painless. 
That's pretty good. That was a pretty good little fight from Vulpix right there. Level 13 is that magical level. And get through this real quick. And we are saving sub 30 minutes. Which is pretty good for a Pokemon that... Well, it's pretty good for a Pokemon that's not necessarily strong. We are going to heal here. So oddly enough, we'll talk about uh, Brock just real quick. Onyx, uh, level 14 Onyx with uh, Trainer's DVs should have 26 speed. Now right now, we just hit level 14, but at level 13 we had 26 speed as well. But I won every single possible turn. If it was a, if it was a speed tie, I won every single one of them. I don't know why I did, but in testing I also did as well. Now, the first time I tried this run, I did something that took a little bit longer. Instead of grinding up on like the Light Years Junior Trainer, I grinded up on the Rattatas and the uh, Pidgeys on the route before, or the grass right below Pewter, and I got enough stat experience to get up to uh, 27 speed at level 13, and that was my goal going forward on the first run. But it turns out that for whatever reason, it just seems like you just win every every speed tie. Uh, I have to look back over the footage, but I just don't think it mattered. I think I won every single one. And in the previous runs, previous attempts, I won them all of there as well. Now, this route is very easy. Bunch of bugs, bunch of little weak Pokemon. You just, you know how it goes. We got Ember. It's very good. But the thing is, you gotta look ahead, guys. And we know that Misty's coming up, and Misty's gonna be a problem. Uh, with every other fire type run we've done, we've had to skip Misty, and today's not really gonna be an exception. Now, I would just like to straight up uh, take on every trainer here. So we're gonna take on every trainer here, and even inside of Mount Moon, uh, there's a bug catcher in there. There's plenty of trainers that don't have rock types or stuff that's going to resist or do super effective and just be a hassle. There's plenty of easy trainers in there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just straight up fight every trainer out here and then probably fight three or four trainers in Mount Moon. Uh, Vulpix, unfortunately, can't use Mega Punch. As hilarious as it would be to see this little fox punch something in the face, we can't do it. No coverage moves here. We just learned Quick Attack. And that does help out a lot. So that means that we won't have to heal here and we can just pretty much continuously grind all these trainers and have enough PP to make it all the way to Cerulean. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to continue to battle all these trainers. I'm going to go through Mount Moon, pick up the usual stuff, the Rare Candy, the Escape Rope, you know, all the stuff that you just normally do in these kind of uh, routes. And what I'm going to do is we'll cut back when we are moving to Cerulean unless some shenanigans happen. As I'm going through some of these battles in here, I would like to just say that I really like Vulpix's back sprite. It doesn't really look like Vulpix. It looks more like a dog with a mohawk or something like that. But we don't get to, like, I know normally, even as a kid, you don't really get to see all the Pokemon's back sprites too often. And one of the good things about these runs is you get to see some of these back sprites. And I just think that, um, as far as back sprites go, I, I just I really like Vulpix's back sprite, and I thought it'd be worth mentioning. And you can just see here that some of these trainers, like this last that has the grass tops, easy, just like taking candy from a baby type experience here. And uh, let's move on. All right, now we're in Cerulean. We've healed, uh, doing all the extra trainer battles, and we didn't do them all, like I said. But we are level 20 now, and I guess it's really all going to depend on this Pidgeotto. Uh, quick attack and a crit. Okay, it's perfect actually. And we outspeed. Well, come on. It barely survives. It gets the sand attack off and I missed the. Ugh. Man. Man, man, man. One sand attack. It's just gonna ruin my day, isn't it? Now we. Ugh. Just don't miss, please. Ugh. Hyper Fang, do you guys think we can make it through Squirtle? We can, maybe we can roar it and maybe it'll be get scared. Okay, there we go. How did it, we got so lucky. It did a quick attack, did a little bit of damage. We got off an Ember, it crit. We outspeed, we got off another Ember and it just barely survived. If we would've just killed it right there. Oh God. 
I hate it. Maybe... <laughs> no, that's too cheaty. I was about to say, maybe I should have requested the ROM just to remove Sand Attack as a move, but... Uh, let's just... I'm salty. Round two. No Sand Attack. He missed a Sand Attack. Maybe gods do shine upon me. So we are at 100% accuracy. But the thing is, a Hyper Fang from the Rattata will still hurt. But we'll take quick attacks all day. And we got a quick attack of our own to finish off. Oh my god, I just thought of something. No, he survived. He got the Sand Attack off. Let, never mind. Just forget what I'm saying. I was thinking maybe I should have used Sand Attack last battle. Ember's gonna be resisted, but our attack is absolutely pathetic. I'm gonna roll the dice here. And I'm going to use a few Tail Whips. And we're gonna see if... Oh yeah, that's some damage. Oh yeah, that's some damage, boy. We take the fight. Just like that. Now this isn't too bad, uh, all things considered. And I reiterated, I don't remember what video I said this in. It was one of the last couple. Uh, Cloister, maybe? Where I talked about, if you think about it, there's like 70-something total battles in the game if you're doing the minimum track. A little bit more. If you're doing a run like this, we're going to have to do some extra battles. Um, so if you think about it, the route to Bill's house has so many trainers in it. There's five just on Nugget Bridge. Um, is that... I should have healed here. I'm kind of kind of playing a risky game. Um, but there's a lot of trainers here. There's about 10. And that makes up a huge percentage of the game here. So if you can do anything to make... Uh, Nugget Bridge. This is where you want to be the most efficient because this is where the most concentrated amount of trainers are in the entire game. And look at me not saving it. But overall, it's really not that interesting. Uh, you know, Rattata, some bugs, uh, that son of a bitch hacker. Uh, somebody mentioned me saying that that one time, but he is a bitch. And we're going to be skipping him. Uh, but let's, let's get through Nugget Bridge a little bit before I continue babbling on. So something I've been oblivious to is that sometimes in the route, I'll say, I battle this optional hiker right here. I battle him uh, so I can get the elixir. But the thing is, I should have healed here. I might, I might, we might die. It doesn't matter if I die. Uh, the point stays the same. We died. Okay, let's just reset. The point I'm trying to make here is that this isn't an optional hiker. You could do this as the a mandatory hiker. Is what I'm trying to get at. I didn't even heal. Do I not learn from my mistakes? Can I not do that? Oh my god. Okay, healed up. Uh, the whole point that I was trying to make before this rude hiker... I'm using quick attack against a Geodude. What does my life come to? Uh, the whole point here is that it's not an optional hiker. You can use this as your one uh, hiker. For your one battle here. So you can go ahead you can get the elixir. And then you can just go boom, 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 boom. And then you're, that's it. That's all it takes. So you don't actually have to use that guy as an extra trainer. You can just do him as the one. Now that's something that I didn't know. It might be obvious to some of you. I know some of you, are, some of you guys watching are goddamn professionals. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And let's get done with this route. And here we're just going to... We're just going to straight up skip Misty. There's absolutely no point in trying her right now. Trust me. We could try to look our way through, but I really don't want to do that. That just sounds like asking for trouble. You're just at, you're looking for a crit. Uh, and even then, you might need multiple. You're not surviving a bubble beam from Star Me. Get over yourself. So we're skipping over it. And this battle's not going to be too interesting here. Uh, it's just, you know... A Team Rocket member using a Drowsy and a Machop, that's kind of weird in itself. I never really thought about it, but the, the reward, you know, you, you normally get Dig here, and what makes this little ROM thing that I got going on here, uh, we'll see in just a second, my second little change from the ROM. You ready for this, guys? TM28, they, the game tells you it's not Tombstoner, brother. It is Tombstoner. TM28 is Tombstoner, brother. You've heard it here first. Now, we are going to be using Tombstoner on our uh, Vulpix here. So, Dig, good move, great coverage, you already know. But, that's a fun little change. 
I'm getting a lot of slow down here. I think it might be my computer. My computer sucks dick, guys. Uh, sorry to be so vulgar about it, but it's getting on the point to where it's getting over seven years old now, and it's just, it's not doing that great, but it's so expensive to get a PC right now. Uh, you know, but we got to make do with what we got. Now we're heading towards the SSN, and good thing that Vulpix can learn Body Slam. I say good, but it doesn't really have a good attack. Uh, Body Slam is just, you know, 90%, 99% of all Pokemon in the game. It's just going to be a neutral move. So, it's really good to have. It's a very strong move, especially early in the game. It just gives us a little decent move pool. It's kind of like your standard fire starter type uh, little move set. Uh, Ember, uh, Body Slam, Dig. It's just a good combination. Uh, I am going to battle this gentleman. Uh, he's nothing. I got I got Dig, so we'll skip to rival number three in a second. Here we go, rival number three. Uh, you know what it all depends on. Are we are we feeling sand attacky today or no? Two quick attacks. It got burned. I can finish it off with a quick attack of my own. No sand attacks, but quite a little bit of damage. Hopefully, I'm gonna go for a, a tombstone or dig here. I love that it says tombstone. It's so good. It's so perfect. Not bad. Kadabra. Physically frail. I have not learned body slam yet. I probably should have. Gets War Turtle. I'm gonna take the Bubble's not a great move, so it doesn't do too much. So we lower its defense and then hit it with a dig. I crit, so it doesn't matter. We survive on two health, but that should be all that we really need. And we take the fight. Now we're level 26 here. I think maybe No, we can't do Lieutenant Surge. I have to go back and do Misty. Now, the safe thing to do. The very safe thing to do would be to battle some more trainers and be level 28. And when you're level 28, you have access to Confuse Ray and then you can make Misty a little bit more consistent. But do I want, to, what do I want to do? You know guys? I'm risking it for the biscuit here. I think at level 26, we have enough stats to where we could do some resets to where I could potentially save some minutes here. Uh, save a little extra time that normally I wouldn't save. Uh, playing it safe is all good and all. Consistency is cool and all. But we're trying to see how fast the run can be. My game is very choppy. I know sometimes people will say, hey, you can't even tell it's choppy. It's only you that can notice it. But I notice it a lot. I'm sure somebody can notice it acting kind of weird. But I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's the, the new ROM I got or if it's simply just uh, my computer just being a, a piece of shit. I don't know if we'll have to battle the other swimmer down there. But I am going to just go ahead and just get through this Goldeen real quick. Uh, Goldeen looks absolutely pathetic. Someone did say, hey, you should do a Goldeen run. And to that I say, Goldeen looks absolutely pathetic as I start to lose health on it. I still got one more little trainer battle I can do if I need it. I also have a couple of rare candies, a few rare candies actually, if I absolutely need it. I think it's only going to go for Water Gun. So I think the best course of action is just the Tombstoner, brother. It used the X to Of course it did. Water Gun from a Star U doesn't do that much. Now this is where the problems come in. Do I take the risk? Bubble Beam. Yikes. That's a lot of damage. But we crit. Okay. A win condition has revealed itself. No. If we had Quick Attack still. I don't see any situation where the Starmie uses anything other than Water Gun, Bubble Beam. Yeah, it's over. That's a pretty good first attempt. But like I said, um, it really depends. Like, like the safe play here would be to get to level 28. Crit? Of course you're going to crit. Level 28 for Confuse Ray would make this much more consistent. X Defend. What a bad little choice of moves. I'm resetting. This is a... Uh, I'm frustrated on this one. 
Okay, this is about as good as we've done so far. I'm gonna take a risk. I'm gonna use a tail whip. We can survive. No, we can't survive a crit. Thanks for critting. I get the feeling that this, considering that I'm trying to save a little bit of time, I just get the the feeling that this is gonna be one of those bang your head against the wall situations. So we might be here for a while, guys. Um, I don't want to commentate on every single attempt. I just don't... We're going to need to crit. x Divin, not great either. That's not great damage. We're probably going to need to crit. So this is probably going to be one of those... Uh, bang your head against the wall, try to get some luck. Probably should have went to 28, but at this point there's nothing I can do about it. If I crit here though, oh my god, I crit, but it wasn't enough, it just wasn't enough, oh god, so close, fuck it, I'm just gonna battle this guy, I'm thinking maybe we could get to level 27 and maybe those little tiny bit of extra stats can maybe do something for us, but only time can tell. Horsey, another god-awful run. It's been requested, I think. It's on the list somewhere. My list, at this point, my list encompasses every single Pokemon in Generation 1. If you guys want to know. If you guys are requesting something, it's probably been requested. Every Pokemon is on the list. We'll get to it eventually. So that guy's level 27. Not too bad. Did I take any damage? I took... I took a little bit of damage. I'm very frugal. I don't want to use a potion just for this little tiny, minuscule amounts of health. The star you match up was already good. Uh, if Dig can be a one shot, uh, of course it can't. Would be looking pretty good if it was though. Level 28 probably does seem like that magic level. And if, if this keeps up for a while, we might crit, crit, crit. Oh, that's that damage is not very tombstoner, if you know what I mean. Not very tombstoner. Guys, at this point, I think I have no choice. I gotta use a rare candy. And we'll get Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is very important. We'll replace Tail Whip. And we'll see how that attempt goes. Maybe level 28. I don't know. I haven't really went for any stat experience or anything like that. So, But maybe this is enough of a... Our attack's just so low. I don't think this, will, this still won't be a one shot. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it is. Interesting. Tell me more. Crit. Alright, hurt yourself. Base damage. We're gonna go... Okay, we're still hanging on, though. We're still hanging on. Okay, we're still hanging on. We're still hanging on. And that's it. We've done it. There we go, baby. I probably should have grinded, but I think it's a little bit faster to use the rare candy anyway. I'm not too worried about it, and that is outside of Lance's Gyarados, which is like 18 years into the future. Uh, that's the hardest battle in the game. That felt good. We barely hung on. I might have to lower my volume in post-production because I felt like I got a little loud because I got a little excited, but that's fine. Uh, nothing wrong with a little excitement. If you got a problem with it, maybe you should reevaluate your life. How about that so there we go now everyone's favorite rock tunnel uh, I'm not even gonna say for this I don't respect this trainer I hate this trainer who has two oddishes and two bell sprouts her whole strategy is to paralyze you and then wrap you to death it's the most demoralizing awful little stupid idiot trainer and you're getting exactly what you deserve today this is exactly what you need oh no Oh god. I got put to sleep. I'm getting wrapped. Oh no. Okay, I woke up. Thank god. Okay. I wasn't even worried, little idiot trainer. Okay, level 29. Rock Tunnel, not gonna be too bad. We have Dig uh, for the hiker. The I'll say it one more time. The Suicide Hiker, guys. Anybody with me with that name? Or should we say Self-Destruct? Hiker because it's fun to be family family friendly and I'm just curious if you're an eight-year-old kid watching my videos 
comment below. Say, hey, I'm eight years old. If you're not eight, year, eight years old, don't say that. Don't confuse me like that. I want to know my demographic. Because I can obviously look up my demographic. It tells me 25 to 34 is my largest demographic. And that's about where I fall as well. So, shout out to everybody. So, I feel like I can be myself a little bit more. I'm not pandering to these little kids. Uh, and even if you are a little kid, I would like to think that you would have... Oh, Bone Club. I, I've... You guys will probably appreciate the fact that I'm not talking down to you. I'm gonna... Oh my god. You get what I'm saying? You guys appreciate that I'm not talking down to you, or changing my speech patterns, or kind of concealing who I am a little bit, just to pander towards a certain rating, or a certain, you know, to be PG and get more viewers. I would think that some of you would appreciate that. You know what I mean? But anyway... This looks like it's going to be fairly annoying. I don't really know what to do about it, but we're just going to tombstone our way around here. If he wants to use Growl, I'm just going to go straight for Ember, which looks like what I should have been doing the whole time. Uh, either way, Rock Tunnel, not too bad. I'm going to get through this, and then we're going to pick up to when the game gets to my favorite part. Cool. Cool. Ugh. You little suicidal maniac. No, I have a method. We're about to get to Celadon. I have a method here. Maybe we can get this in the first try. There's a hidden elixir and a hidden nugget. I'm trying to go slow, but also fast. You know what I mean, guys? Sometimes you gotta go slow, but also fast. Perfect! Look at that! Got them both. I know exactly. I know exactly the steps you need to take. So here, we do need to heal. And the unfortunate thing is that I have been skipping the Celadon Pokemart. Um, I've been skipping it. Because, uh, what am I saying? I'm just rambling here. I've been skipping it so I can save time later in the run. Is what I'm trying to say. So, I can't skip it. Because I need to go to Lieutenant Surge. Probably sooner rather than later. You know what, actually right now is probably the... How much muns do I got? How much muns do I got here? 18. That's not enough for me to... Break a sweat. So, this does waste a little time. But honestly, there's nothing you can do. You were just so hard-walled at Misty. That you just... You have no choice but to skip... Misty when we did and we seen that even even with skipping it we still had to use a rare candy uh, to make it through it so there's absolutely nothing we could do so we got to go to the Pokemart I'm not gonna do anything extra as well uh, I'm simply just gonna go to the top floor and buy uh, the bare minimum can't learn anything in here we'll come back later for vitamins and then we're going to go through Saffron and then go fight Lieutenant Surge I'm a bit of a liar. I am going to buy two calciums. Because I'm here, I need to unload some of my inventory anyway. Uh, so I am just going to buy two. So I'm a filthy liar. Special. We'll talk about this more later probably. Or maybe I would dip into it. But while I'm thinking of it now, let's just go ahead and say it. If you have a choice, because proteins would be very good for this run. Uh, the physical damage in the hardest fights, will the extra damage will help us out a lot. But if you got the choice, usually it's better to pick the special because we all know unified stat in Generation 1. So it encompasses both attack and defense. So you're getting a 2-4. A 2 for 2 for I should say. What 2-4? What am I saying? Uh, you're getting a 2 for 1 special there. And it's just better to do that. Jesus Christ. I haven't saved in a while. And I accidentally ran into this Butterfree Trainer. Everyone, give it up for the Butterfree Trainer. I guess it wasn't too bad. I mean, that's kind of 681 experience. It's kind of a lot. I should have done that earlier. But anyway, Lieutenant Surge. And we have the next change in the ROM. I totally didn't copy Scott's thoughts. But guys, the trash can puzzle already solved. Because it takes... I reset anyway till I find the puzzle solution. And I get it on the first try anyway. So this just eliminates me just doing this honestly dumb puzzle. So if you have a problem with it, 
Stop it! St you have a problem with me? With a puzzle? Come on, dude. Get your life together. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I don't... We're over-leveled for this fight, and we have Dig anyway. So, boom. There you go. Just like that. Over. Before I could even uh, ridicule somebody for having a problem with my uh, new modification here. Anyway, that's done. And that means that we already have Fly taught. Which means we can immediately go back to Celadon. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the Rocket Hideout first. You would think that Erica might be like the obvious choice here. But... I don't... If I was closer to 35, I would think about it. It would it'd still probably be pretty easy. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. It would be pretty easy. But I still think that this is easy as well. And I'm just looking to get some levels, get some easy experience. I have a bunch of embers left. And I just think this is the way to go. And like always, guys, if you disagree with me, if, you, if you're looking at a run and you're saying, hey, you could do this and it would be faster. Or you should do this and, you know, just stuff like that. By all means, guys, it's, it's free. Pokemon Randomizer, get yourself a ROM. Uh, put in the randomizer, replace the same starter, get yourself perfect DVs, um, put it on fastest text, and just do the run. And show me your time. Say, hey, I made this change, and it was this much faster. And I would say, okay, cool. Good job. Good job for saving two minutes in a run, a Vulpix run. You did it. And I guess I'm not saying that in like a malicious way. I'm not doing that at all. I'm just saying that sometimes, I don't know how to word this correctly, I guess. Let me articulate my thoughts the best way possible. But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes people say things and they they have no backing up of what they just said. But they have no idea if it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? And that's what gets me. It doesn't get me, I guess. Like whatever comments, I'm gonna reply to you. We're gonna respond. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a hoot and a holler. You know, we're gonna have a good time. But sometimes people just say stuff. They're like, uh, actually, you could have done this, and it's like, no, I couldn't have. Have you tried that? That's not a time save. And then you know, I just I do multiple runs. Pretty much every video, there's at least one, two, maybe even three. Hell, maybe even four runs behind it before we finally get the footage and then I'm writing a script over that. This one's a little bit different uh, because I think we're on to something with Vulpix here, but you get what I'm saying. I don't mind being corrected. I don't mind being uh, taught new things. I forgot the HP up. Uh, we're not going back. It's too late now. I've been, I was on a rant and it's too late now. But like I'm saying, uh, I don't mind being corrected. I don't mind learning new things. I don't mind some new tech, some new strategies coming into play. That's all fine and good. I love it. But when somebody just says something, they haven't tested it at all. They don't know what they're talking about. It's just like, okay, could I really save time there? Or are you just saying that? Do you just, or do you just think that? We're going to die here because I didn't heal. I got to, I got to stop ranting. I don't know what this is the what the live format is about. This is why I originally there's two reasons. There's two reasons why I went to this new video format after taking like a year plus break off of YouTube. First of all, is like like if I was to break this up into parts, who the hell is gonna be watching like Vulpix Run Part 27? You know? I just find that uh this kind of content if you just spread it out over like a hundred part series or something like that, it's just, it feels kind of lazy to me. i gonna be honest with you. It, it just feels a little bit lazy. But, and the second thing is that, uh, watching a concise, complete game in one video, it just seems much more interesting to me. Did I, I think I already lost my train of thought. I'm not used to these live commentaries. What I meant to say, what I think I meant to say, because I can't go back, it's we're live, um, is that the script keeps me focused. I sit down and I write a script. It keeps me honed in to what I actually want to say and what I should say. And I don't start talking about random stuff like I'm doing right now. 
And that's the difference. Some of you might like that. Some of you have seemed to like that from the Mr. Mime video. So this is kind of what you get. This isn't every video. I might do a second video like this because I kind of enjoy it. If I get some free time and sit down, like, I actually don't mind doing these kind of videos. Especially, I'm very excited to see how the editing does for this. But I digress. We're on Giovanni. I don't even know. I've just been mashing buttons, I feel like. Where are we? Who am I? Where are we at? Hello? Kangaskhan His defense is worse It locked itself into rage That's perfect Back to back crit Wow Easy fight Easy money Don't forget your self scope And we can use uh, It still says dig right here But that's all fine We know it's tombstoner now I'm going down to Erica. I'm running extremely low on Ember PP. I got it. Okay, I was about to say, I think I'm making a mistake. I don't have, usually I have my stats and stuff pulled up. Or normally I just do the run. And then I look at this stuff later so I can talk about it. So what I think I need to do in here is take out all the trainers. Because they're going to be so easy. I only have five embers left. Hopefully it's enough to one shot. And hopefully I level up within the next... Oh my god, are you going to start rapping? Oh. Yeah, we're down to our last couple of embers. Like I was saying before, we got rudely interrupted by another status rap combination. We should be getting close to that level up. Luckily we avoided that poison powder right there. I think I got one antidote left. You guys haven't seen it, but I have got poison quite a lot in this run already. Hit level 35. When am I going to hit level 35? Jesus. Okay, level 35. Flamethrower. This is one of the things, if not the thing. There's two things for Vulpix. We'll get over all of them as the video goes on. But learning Flamethrower at level 35 is such a huge boost to your power. Flamethrower, in fact, Flamethrower is so good for Vulpix right now that I feel confident enough just to go ahead and use two PP ups on it. No cycling allowed here. Didn't mean to do that game. But I am, since we got Flamethrower, we got some PP ups. Our PP's way up right now. Uh, I'm going to finish off. I think there's two or three more trainers after this. Um, you already know how it's going to go. We'll cut back to Erica. I made a mistake, I drugged this girl down so I can't uh, cut that bush and get right up to that other trainer and I'm just not going to waste the time going down using cut and walking around again. Uh, so here we are, at level 36, maybe we outspeed. I didn't heal because I think this one's going to just be a route and it looks like it is going to be that way. Tangela, the worst Pokemon in the game, one of them anyway. Uh, Vileplume, I love Vileplume, one of my favorite Pokemon actually. So, that's good. Very easy battle, but did anyone think that we would see anything different right there? So we're immediately going over to Pokemon Tower. I'm not going to heal. I'm not going to save. It might be a mistakey poo, but we'll see. I don't have much PP left in anything, but Flamethrower is just really good at this point in the game. Like, you're not supposed to have a move this strong with Stab. We don't have any digs left, but we can just neutral body slam. Growl is just pathetic, you know? I can't believe that I picked Growlithe over Vulpix initially. We'll get to that. Vulpix is solid. We'll just say that. I'm hoping to have a really good run today. And I don't think I even... I could probably just cut this battle right now because I think that there's nothing that he could do to beat me. And I would be correct. I am slightly worried about the Ghastlies. I'm out of Dig PP. I have to go through two Ghastlies right here. Now, I can always just reload the save and do it again. Dig would just make this a lot easier. Because I don't think Flame... They have such high special. I don't think Flamethrower is going to be a one-shot. I'm completely wrong. Maybe those two Calciums paid off. Don't forget that last little HP up down here. I did forget the one HP up inside of the Rocket Hideout. But, it's all good. I am holding off a long time on visiting that Pokemon at the end. 
that means my item inventory I'm picking up some extra things to sell it means that I'm getting a little bit more clogged up in my inventory here so I will probably have to make one this will probably be the extra trip that I'll have to make overall uh, to the PC you don't normally want to do this but I really don't think it can be helped we are heading down to Fuchsia as usual I don't think I'm going to be picking up the Max Elixir, but I will pick up this PP up. And I actually think I'm going to use the last PP up on Tombstoner, which is Dig. It's going to get kind of confusing, I guess. I'm going to be skipping the Max Elixir. Pretty good item. Really good item. I uh, believe it's the only one in the game, but especially the only one that you're going to get uh, on this route. So I'm going to go ahead and heal right here because we're going to be coming right back out in just a second and we are going to go ahead and pick up our final HMs of the run uh, I'm going to pick up, I think that's double team right there, I don't use double team I'm pretty sure that's it, double team, what a cheap move if you use double team in your playthroughs, shame on you now we're making our way to Koga Koga, in my testing, Koga was pretty rough but you do have an ace in the hole and you already know we got Dig, so if we can just get the Weezing to self-destruct when it uses Dig, that's probably good. Now I think Flamethrower probably does, yeah, Flamethrower does more damage than Dig would do, even though it's super effective. That's just, it gets stabbed. You already know why. It, our special's higher and it gets stabbed. I could probably use uh, Poison again. This is the third time I've been poisoned inside of Coco's Gym. That's a lot of damage. We're, this is fine. This is fine, though. Got the crit. All I need to happen is dig underground, self-destruct. Dig underground, self-destruct. Oh my god. Okay. It'll happen eventually. Alright, this time we are not poisoned. All that has to happen is we dig underground. And he self-destructs. Please. Please. It doesn't matter, we just take him out anyway. Not too bad, a little bit easier than I remember it last time. Uh, that's not bad at all. So that is five badges down, which essentially means that Silphco is the last place that we can go. And I think it's probably time to go ahead and buy vitamins, but I think we're gonna hold off. Because you really don't need the extra, like extra stats, sure they always help, but I can't just be visiting the Pokemart like every time, you know, just every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off to probably about the end of the gym portion of the game. Uh, we'll hold off until then. And what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and do my usual routes. I think I probably should have sold. I think my last save was before Koga, so I can't back out right now. No more room for I, I can't even look. I'm full on items, and this isn't great. I'm not too pleased about this. Because I'm pretty sure on floor number 7, there's a protein right here. I think that's a protein. No, it's a calcium. Which is even better. Okay, so I did go back up. Something a little extra. I wanted to see about that calcium. Cause I've just been kind of looking up like ways to to squeak out just a little bit more. You know what I mean? We do get the chance to learn Fire Spin at level 42. I'm not going to do it. I think Fire Spin's accuracy is awful and the damage isn't that great. I think Flamethrower is overall just way, be way better. I just hiccup. Sorry. I don't know if I'll need to grind, but I am immediately going to go face rival number 5 now. Because if we can get by now, I think that just bodes well for the run. We got Pidgeot. This is the last time that we'll have to deal with uh, Sand Attack. I didn't heal, but I wasn't missing that much HP. So now we're kind of a little bit down right now. But we have good an Flamethrower. I can't understate this enough. Flamethrower is absolutely monstrous. And we can one shot the Alakazam. Now, this isn't looking too bad. I say as I go into the water top. Withdraw, I can take that. Since he used the withdraw. Oosh, that's pretty heavy damage. 
If we could just get... Jesus Christ. Okay. That was a pretty good first attempt. No reason to be upset about it. That's what I'm thinking anyways. So this first part... Oh, we took a sand attack. I was just about to say, hey, this first part looks pretty consistent. Until I missed two flamethrowers in a row after a sand attack. Now let me go ahead and miss this uh, dig. Nope. I'm still in it, somehow. It was just one sand attack. How much could it really affect the battle? You know what I'm saying? We haven't missed yet. Please reflect. I missed again. Just... Oh my god, we missed. We're missing moves. That's very annoying. I don't think I can do this. No, I can't. So like I was saying, we avoid that little sand attack, and we just get through this fight easy. Critical hit, that's the absolute best case scenario. I'm not going to use Dig with Alakazam because it gives it the opportunity to use Reflect. And I think the Body Slam damage is just better overall. It's not enough. Oh no, Disabled Confuse Ray, that's not good. I'm going to go for... I should be going for Body Slams. Par paralysis. I'm still disabled. This is close. Okay, we got it. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And I was about to say we're going to have to rely on Confuse Ray for this. But it turned out to be pretty much disabled for most of the fight. And we got it down without it anyway. So now we got our Lapras, and now we got Giovanni number two, and Giovanni number two is going to be nothing. There's, I can go ahead and call it right now, there's no reason to look at it. And at this point, since I'm already in Saffron, uh, it's where I dug back out of at the end, I might as well try Sabrina. We do outlevel her. I, maybe we do. Let's, let's find out. Body Slam's not enough. But we did get a full paralysis proc, which is honestly kind of lucky. We're just really not that strong. It's kind of like how Psyduck was, I guess. Uh, but we do get the opportunity here to use this flamethrower on this Venomoth. This is going to feel great. Mm. Now hopefully we can outspeed, but I doubt it. Level 43. Hopefully no reflect. It's not great damage. He got Reflect though. And he used Recover. So... Confuse Ray into Flamethrower seems like the play here. Side Wave, one of the most pathetic moves. There we go. That was pretty painless. First attempt victory. I will take those any day of the entire week. That's pretty good. Now very important here. Don't forget to turn in your... Uh, golden teeth for the strength HM. I do that quite a bit when I'm practicing. I just forget. Like I get in the zone, I start seeing the end in sight, and it just makes me forget about coming back here. And I do it, I just do it a lot, and it's kind of annoying. But don't forget it. If you're trying to emulate some of these runs yourself, um, for, don't remember, don't for, don't, what am I saying? Just don't. Oh yeah, now it's time for a nice, brisk, serene, serendipitous, perfect gentle walk down to Cinnabar and we probably shouldn't do the bare minimum but I do need to sell some items here so let's get all that taken care of part of me thinks that I should battle all of the trainers inside of Blaine's gym but I just feel like there's some magic in the air tonight I feel like maybe Vulpix will be all right if we don't and I think we can brute force our way through a lot of the fights. And so I'm just not going to. I probably should, just like with a Misty fight. But I think we'll be okay. Hopefully. Alright guys, are you ready for the best change in this entire mod? You know everybody's favorite question. Ready for some Tombstoner, brother? You know what I'm saying. And now... TM28 contains Tombstoner, brother. You see that? Look how perfect that is. And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Finally. Finally. Validation. That's the best change of the mod. 
so good. Now we're into Blaine here, and this shouldn't be too bad. I don't know if we'll even have to really do anything here. One shot, probably another one shot here, and then we're probably looking at a two shot for Rapidash and a three shot for uh, Arcanine, if I had to guess. I actually don't even need to use a second dig there. I can just do that. Takedown would probably hurt. It missed. Super Potion, not what I want to see. Roar, that's what I do want to see. Okay, recoil. He killed himself with a recoil. That's exactly what I want to see. And there we go. That is seven badges down. Now it's time to finally visit the Celadon Pokemart. Uh, at this point, we have about 86k. We have everything else bought up. I've already checked and seen how much I can buy. So I can afford eight vitamins and three calciums will max out our stat experience, which will help us out, especially later after we use our rare candies and we finally get all that into play into our stats. Uh, five proteins here. Um, Carbos for speed wouldn't be too bad. But Vulpix isn't that slow, and we're not going to be under-leveled, so I just think overall the extra attack to help out in those bad matchups like Lance's Gyarados uh, will help out the most. So that's pretty much it, and we are pretty much kind of staring down the barrel here of the end of the game, and there's not really anywhere else to go except to heal up and go challenge Giovanni. And the problem with this fight, there's only going to be really one problematic section, that's the Doug Trio. We aren't there yet, but do notice how something like this flamethrower with Rhyhorn's bad special is going to actually do more damage than a dig would do. So there's digs okay for some coverage, especially coming up against Agatha would be great. But right here, the only real strategy here is to dig second. It digs first, I dig second, it misses, I hit the dig. That's not too great actually, we're going to hit a dig here. We cannot survive, that's not going to be great. There's not really much you can do here. We got a Tail Whip. I think we'll get, Never mind. There goes the Badge Boost right there. It's gonna dig, unless it gets a Guard Spec. Either way, there's not really much you can do other than maybe hope for a Crit. There we go, yeah, Crit right there on turn two. So that means that it is probably very important for us to get through this fight on the first turn. Now this is where Flamethrower is gonna put in some work. It's not resisted. Of course we get poisoned. That's gonna waste a little time, but that's just fine. Middle King. I'm gonna go straight flamethrower from here on out because uh, digging will make us waste a turn and that will add up some poison damage that I don't really wanna go for. Don't really want to have to take. Now, Rhyhorn's just incredibly bulky. But I think it's probably just gonna spam Fisher. Yeah, it looks that way. There we go. Not too bad. Uh, what was it? Two tries? You didn't do that crit. Uh, I probably could have used some rare candies in, at the worst case scenario. But overall, I'm not going to dive into it too much. I am poisoned. I think I have a single antidote left. But I am just going to go heal. Alright, now for rival number six. We'll go ahead and take a look at the first attempt here and see how it goes. Uh, and testing this fight was really hard. I think I had to end up using rare candies initially, but level 48 is not that bad. We can two shot with a flamethrower, our bread and butter, and all things considered, we're pretty healthy. Not really. <laughs> flamethrower just does more against the, the Rhydon. You guys can do the calculations if you want, but it just does. There's no way around it. So I'm half health. I'm pretty sure I haven't played this spot since I've tried I think I tried it last week. And this is my first time doing the run since then. So this is where the problems are going to come in. I'm pretty sure the Alakazam is going to outspeed us and it's not going to be good. It sets up Reflect. And that's it. That's it done. I am going to give this maybe a few tries without it to see if something can maybe happen uh, to get by this one. And if not, I'm not opposed to using the Rare Candies. It's fine with me. Mimic for agility would help on the uh, Growlithe, but I don't use Mimic. I'm not going to use Mimic for this run, I'm pretty sure. Okay, we survived one. If we get lucky...
Yeah, okay, we could take we took the Alakazam out. But kind of an uphill battle here. And at that point, when he starts using withdrawals, it really It really puts a damper on our damage. Oh, straight into a hydro pump. Okay, so that was pretty lucky. To ma even make it that far, I feel like we needed some luck. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to use some rare candies, I think. We have nine, because we had to use one earlier, and we still got one more to get. So I'm just going to go... Use a few at least. How about we try level 53? Now let's see kind of what we do on the Alakazam now. I really want to go for that Confuse Ray. Ah, but we do outspeed now. Body Slam does a hefty chunk. So does Psychic. We could probably play it better next time now that we know. But we do have to Confuse Ray the Blastoise. And probably hope for, honestly, some pretty luck. Pretty big luck here. Okay, broke out of Confusion. But we've got it to hurt itself a couple times. If we can just one more hurt... Yeah, we got this in the bag, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went a little bit higher my first time. And I picked level 53 because if you notice there, we leveled up to 54 at the end. Which means that I'm going to be using the least amount of experience possible. Or losing the least amount of experience possible. Because I dinged up to level 54 right at the end. And Rare Candies reset your experience to zero and gives you a level up. So nothing that carries over, so this way, it was the least wasteful way to do it. But now we're headed on to the Elite Four. Uh, the huge issue, obviously, like it always is, especially for fire types, Lance's Gyarados is what I initially thought, or I still think that, it's going to be bad, but it's the boogeyman of this run. Alakazam's not great, but we've dealt with a couple of them. That, it's that Gyarados leading out with Lance uh, first slot it's gonna spam nothing but hydro pump it's not gonna be great so I will be picking up the extra rare candy in here and outside of that no battles I'm trying to make it through the end as fast as I can because uh, we're actually having a pretty solid little run here so far and it was when I was doing my testing like I said I did about one and a half two runs uh, of Vulpix it was around like some times like these where I started to notice I was like this time is actually pretty good like how's how's the time this good so I had to go back and watch the footage and I was like like what's happening here because Vulpix is kind of like a conundrum of a Pokemon like you don't think it's doing that good and it seems like it's been doing okay but I hope you guys are surprised at the time at the end of this. And I think as we look at the, the, we finally get to the end of the run and we look back, the main thing is that I think Confuse Ray, I hopped it up during the, the Zubat run. I think my exact words, or not verbatim, but my words in the Zubat video was, if Zubat, it at least, it's one positive is that it has access to Confuse Ray. Now Confuse Ray is a very underrated move. It's very good, it's not Spore, levels of good not even close it's not even sleep powder because it's not sleep confusion is just like a very unreliable status but in a in-game time run it's actually pretty solid I usually say before I go up to that last but I didn't I took a risk and it paid off but confuse ray and the fact that you get flamethrower uh, pretty early level 35 is pretty early for flamethrower it's so strong you can see like like in situations with a 65 special with our stat experience maxed out it does some pretty heavy damage and we're about to see a lot more of that oh my god I didn't I decided to go two steps without using a repel and this is what happens once again who placed these statues what madman placed the statues here I am gonna go ahead and use our last five rear candies we have no batch boosting moves we will not be using mimic so there's no point in hanging on to any rare candies because uh, we don't need to manipulate our experience but that does put us at level 59 pretty respectable pretty solid and that means we can jump into jump what did i just say we can jump right into Lorelai. water ice neutral damage to fire um you would think it wouldn't be great but 
Honestly, Flamethrower's kind of a monster, guys. Flamethrower's a really good move. It's just like a Surf Clone or something like that, but just... Fire's not a great type. Especially with uh, some of the, the key problems in the run. Clamp, oh my god. Here's why Fire Type's not very good. But we still made it past. But Flamethrower, it just... No, not many stuff resist Fire. That's what I'm trying to say. I am going to confuse the Slowbro. And you can see even this massively resisted Flamethrowers do pretty good against Slowbro. Uh, we pretty much have to use it because he's used Withdraw so many times there's no point. And Jinx is, of course, obviously weak. It's not water type, so it's weak, so it's going to get put down like the dog that it is. Now, Lapras has Hydro Pump. We crit there. It missed Hydro Pump. That's perfect. There's huge bass going on outside my window. Hope you guys can't hear that. That's Lorelei. That's like the very first attempt we got Lorelei down. Um, I am going to heal here. Usually, I would, wouldn't even give Bruno the satisfaction, but... Let's just, I'm not even going to take a break. I'm not even going to take a cut between this one. Yawn. Hey guys, it's Bruno. It's our weekly look at Bruno. Honestly, Tombstoner, or Dig, I should say. Look how, look at the damage it does compared to this. Flamethrower is just better. Uh, Vulpix is, has very weak uh, attack. So, there's that. Flamethrower, another one shot. Fantastic. Flamethrower, another one shot. Fantastic. Not a one shot, but still pretty good. That's a pretty painful rock throw, but at the end of the day, it's a rock throw from Bruno. It's pretty pathetic, so that's it. Uh, I guess my champ could do heavy damage, but I'm betting it's going to go for like a Leer this year. And it's burned. Get burned, bitch. That's Bruno down. Alright, now let's hop into Agatha. And Vulpix has pretty decent speed. We have we've used a lot of Carbos too, and we don't outspeed it. But we woke up immediately, dug a hole. We're kind of hurting ourselves. This isn't looking great. This is kind of like everything that you don't want to see. Not quite enough. Wait, wait, wait. We must be speed tying because I went first right there. I'm pretty sure, didn't I? I can't look back. I'm pretty sure that had to be a speed tie. And flamethrower, crit, that's what I like to see. Um, so if we speed tied the first Gengar, we should outspeed this. And it's weaker, so it should be a one shot. Yes, it crit, but the crit doesn't matter there. Uh, this is what you got to dig for. Tombstoner, brother, in full effect. Oh my god, Par uh, paralysis? You gotta be kidding me. Now if we could just... What the fuck is happening? Can I ask you guys that? What the fuck is happening? Now, there's a chance we can still win this. Nope. Not too bad. Uh, I'm not going to show Lorelai or Bruno again. Uh, it honestly wasn't that bad. So, let's get back to uh, uh, Agatha again. Alright, here we go. It was a speed tie. Yes, it was a speed tie because I went first that time. We're just out of the range there. That's sickening. If I would have just picked up one more protein, or I'd have had one more level, I bet it's going to go for a super potion. No. Equally as annoying. The bad thing about confusion with a dig move is that uh, you get two chances to hurt yourself. It's really not fair. Kind of annoying. What's annoying is how the Arbok was actually trouble for us last time and paralyzed us. So please don't do that again. Super Potion, doesn't matter. Instead of going for the Body Slam this time, I went for the Dig, the correct play, and 66 means we can survive a Nightshade. We actually, do we speed tie this too? Or did I get some badge boost? I outspeed for whatever reason. I'll take it. And that's Agatha. Pretty easy, honestly. Alright, first look at Lance, and here is where I decided to do a live video for Vulpix. There's a lot of things at play here. I'm faster, Confuse Ray. It can just get off its Hydro Pump, but, you know, there's a multiple, let me just get through this fight. 
hurt itself twice. It missed the Hydro Pump when it finally got it through, and I take it out. You see how that went? I'm going to click off of this so our in-game time's not running, just so I can talk about this for a second. So, I outspeed Confuse Ray, 100% chance to hit. It now has a 50-50 chance of just not getting off its move and hurting itself. So, it's got a 50-50. So, if it does get the move off, it only has an 80% chance of hitting the move. So, there's a 20% chance to miss. Now, if I'm using Body Slam, I then have the chance to paralyze it. So, it has a chance to miss its turn completely. So, if you hit the Paralysis chance on Body Slam, and you do a Confuse Ray, and it's using Hydro Pump, there's a lot of stuff for it to go through. And this is what made me redo the run in the first place because I was a lot higher level. I did a lot of more extra battles than what I did in this run uh, because I was so scared of this thing. And then I was like, hey, Confusionary kind of kind of makes this better than you would think. You would think by virtue it's kind of a luck-based move, but you would be surprised how many times I just get past the Gyarados with ease. So let's continue on in the fight. Uh, the rest of the fight, like the, the Aerodactyl is actually kind of more of a problem than Gyarados was. It's kind of surprising actually, and this is what made me really kind of want to do this run. I am going to Confuse Ray these because they love, they're very Hyper Beam crazy. Uh, and since our specials, that's not that wasn't great at all. We got lucky here, it can hurt itself a couple times. But these Dragonairs love to use Hyper Beam, so we're getting pretty lucky right now. Who knows how much luckier we'll get in the future. We did dig for that hyper beam. Yeah, we kind of played this one perfecto. Aerodactyl. It's going to outspeed. We got our Confuse Ray off, but we are confused. It's going to take a lot of flamethrowers. Hyper beam, please no. That hurts so bad. But it had to recharge. And unless we get lucky here, this is probably a reset. Okay, hurt itself. Paralyze on the body slam. Hurt itself. Agility. Fully paralyzed. That's it. First try. First fucking try, guys. It's that easy. And honestly, this is what made um, me want to do this Vulpix run. Because of how consistently it went through the Elite Four. And I was very shocked. Because everything on paper tells you that this thing is not that good of a Pokemon. That its moveset isn't that great. So we've seen this fight plenty of times. Uh, the real problem here is going to be the Alakazam in the second slot. Um, ooh, this is not going to feel good. I'm going to have to restart, aren't I? Please, God, no, not like this. Confuse Ray. Pray to God for some luck. At this point, I expected the reflect. It got off a second psychic. We're gonna have to restart. I'm not showing the other fights again. I want this video to be less than an hour. We've seen the other fights. We're not going through them again. All right, rival champion fight number two. Hopefully we don't get crit here and just ruin my entire day. Not a crit, perfect. At respectable levels. Now the problem here is we don't outspeed the Alakazam. Reflect on turn one, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm just gonna go for Hold the fuck up. Did I not I don't have enough flamethrowers to make it through this fight. I didn't use elixirs. I forgot to use elixirs. I'm fucked. I'm gonna have to reset and do this whole Woo! That's a user error. This is why I think um, real lifetime metrics suck. Because what if you just make a mistake like that? Are you just going to do the whole entire run over just to hope that you get a slightly less time intensive time when it's just like your mistake, I guess, you know? Like, I didn't use the elixir there. Should I punish the Pokemon for my personal mistakes? That's why I think real lifetime, a lot of it has to do with uh, your own mistakes. So let's reset, let's uh, get back here. It honestly isn't too bad to get back here. I was looking for the max elixir and then I remembered, I said, I don't need it, I'm skipping it earlier in the video. So I'll just use two elixirs and maybe this time will go better. Let's hope so. 
the Elite Four is actually pretty good. It's the Alakazam. You wouldn't think the Alakazam would be a huge problem for a fire type, especially with uh, some of the moves we got. But I just, you already know, Vulpix's attack stat is kind of pathetic. Turn one reflect is actually pretty good. I said that last time. Hurt itself. Hurt itself a lot, actually. It's actually pretty good. Side beam, don't crit. Thank you. And there we go. Uh, so this fight isn't done, by the way. Hopefully this will just go for like Fisher, Tail Whip. Tail Whip's perfect, but I get the feeling that we'll level up. Okay. Okay. Arcanon? We got Dig for that. That was a lot of damage. Jesus fucking Christ. 4 HP. And I didn't even... Oh my god. Ugh. It took... It takes a lot to get past the Alakazam. And then we're just gonna get hit by the takedown and then get taken out by Executor. Uh, persistence is the key, guys. We're back at it once again. If we fail this time, maybe we'll just skip ahead to the... Maybe we'll just start skipping over the Pidgeot. Pidgeot seems to do the same thing every time. Uh, it actually used the flamethrower with mirror move that time, so that actually is better. And Alakazam, we just hope for like a recover or a, a reflect turn one. We got it, but I forgot to confuse Ray. That was some heavy damage though. Oh, we're gonna get through. This is the turn. This is it. This is it. Maybe we can get some like tail whips here. Leer. Maybe we can get another one? No. No, I don't I don't like this. It's doing too much damage. You're hurting me, Rodon. You know that old uh that cat sitting on the girl and she's like, Stop it, you're scaring me. It's one of my favorite uh I guess it's a TikTok you would say, but I love it. Okay, much better. But worryingly enough we found out on that last attempt that Executor is not a one-shot with Flamethrower. That's a lot of damage. That just means that if the if the Blastoise just goes for Hydro Pump, we're done for. So we're gonna need all the luck. All the Tombstoner brothers, come in. We got we gotta get through this fight. Hurt itself. I'm gonna go for Body Slam. Paraly paralysis. Paralysis. We did it, guys. Now we're gonna switch over to Flamethrower because it did a withdrawal. Fully paralyzed. Fully paralyzed. Yes, 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 yes. That was good. You see how annoying this Pokemon can be? I gotta get through this. I don't wanna waste time. But, Confuse Ray, then you got Paralysis or Burn. Like it kinda adds up. It's just a pretty good run and I'm excited to see what this final time is gonna be. I think it's gonna be really good. Probably better than you expect. Vulpix, final level of 63. Three hours and 57 minutes. Now, when this run started, I thought in my head, I said, okay, this run's going to be somewhere between Charmander and Growlithe. I don't think it'll be as bad as Growlithe, but there's no way it's going to be as good as Charmander. It doesn't have a badge boosting move, all that kind of stuff. I didn't think it would be that good. But Confuse Ray combined with an early flamethrower, it really made Vulpix actually Actually really good so if you must know my first run I was kind of casually messing around as my first uh, you know my first go at it and it was like a 4 minute and 15 4 minute 20 something like that or 4 hour 20 4 hour 15 that's a minute who knows but it was pretty good and I was like wow I made a lot of mistakes that time too so let me go at it again so I messed around with it again and I started to get into like that sub 4 hour 10 minute range and I was like you know what? This Gyarados strategy with the Confuse Ray is actually kind of consistent. I bet I could be a lot lower level and make it through this fight. So I started practicing. I started to see how low I could go on Brock. I started to see where I could cut out the times, what you would have to do on Misty. And through it all, we're sitting here with a 3 hour 57 minute time. And once you take those egg moves out of the equation, this is the number 4 run, actually. That's kind of crazy. There's only been 2 other runs. How many? Hang on, let me look again. I swear to God, I just looked at the tier list and I already forgot uh, what place it was in. 
I misspoke earlier. I, I was looking at Cubon. He's still on this one tier list I got. Uh, it's number three. So only the third Pokemon to ever get a sub four hour run in the vanilla game. Uh, every egg move has gotten a sub four hour time. So congrats to them, I guess. I do think looking back, uh, I talked to somebody about this. I think I made a mistake. I sandbag Slowpoke a little bit in the versus run. I don't think I had to grind those Diglets, and I think that added 20 to 30 minutes of in-game time, and I do think Slowpoke could easily be a top two or three Pokemon. But as it stands, Vulpix, I say this a good bit, I feel like, with Persian, with Nidoking, I say the, the run really surprised me a lot, but this one was a absolute shocker. Like, let's say Persian. I thought Persian could have a good run. I thought it could have a three hour run and I'd be happy with that. But it ends up getting in the you know three hour fifty or two hour fifty range, something like that, and it was a pretty good run. And I was like, wow, that's a shocker, it did so good. Nidoking, King, the same thing, it beats out Alakazam, beats out Gengar, that's a shocker, but I knew it was gonna do good. Ulpix is my biggest shock of all because I never expected this thing to even have a sub five hour time. I, if it got like five hours and 50 minutes, six hours, I wouldn't have batted an eye. I would have said, that's fair. No badge boost moves. But like I said earlier, Confuse Ray with an early flamethrower, you really can just dominate this game. And I think that I'm very pleased with this run. I'm not going to ramble that much any longer, uh, but this is a live format. If you make it through the end, I uh, appreciate you. This one isn't as bad as the Mr. Mime video. I know I rambled a little bit. Um, try to cut a little bit loose and be a little bit more candid with you guys. That's why I like this live format. And you guys give me excellent feedback on most of my videos. Especially the Mr. Mime video. You guys were just great telling me what worked, what didn't work. Uh, this one I'm going to be adding music and all that stuff in post because I'm going to be cutting out, you know, and I don't want it to be too crazy and jumpy. So I got some post production to do. So, But I got about, this run, even with all the resets, uh, took me about two and a half hours even of real life time. So it's really not that bad. But I think that's about all I got for you guys. I really want to go back next week into like a Garchomp style run. I really want to try some of these box legendaries in Gen 1. Or even just some other strong Pokemon to see if anybody can maybe get close to Mewtwo. Uh, but we'll see. That's just interesting to me. I'm excited to record that. And I think that's all I got for you. So I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.